Good evening, everyone. It's now 6 p.m. and I call this governing board reg regular meeting to order. Let the record show that all board members are present ex with the exception of Mrs. Johnson. Um, Holly Sheriff is on the phone. And the district is represented by Dr. Holmes, Kim McGovern, Kelly Siegel, Terry Romo, and Heather Rada. And now can I get an adoption of the agenda, please? So moved to adopt the agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The next thing we'll do is stand, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item on the agenda is our board meeting minutes not previously approved. And those were the minutes from our regular meeting that we had on the 15th of February, 2022, and the minutes of our work session that we had on the 16th of February, 2022. I make a motion those minutes be approved. Second. It's been motion to approve and second it. All in favor, or is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any discussion? Aye. Okay. I did that backwards. Okay. And the next item is that we have are going to be our summary of current events. And we're going to start with the superintendent, Dr. Holmes, please. Thank you, President Bute. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, just a couple of items here. Uh, Summer Academy uh, will be held from June 6th through uh, Monday, June 6th through Friday, July 15th. Um, it will be uh, held Monday through Friday from 8 to 2 for our elementary students and from 8.30 to 2.30 for our secondary students. Again, all Sierra Vista uh, residents, school-age residents can attend at no cost. We will begin registration for students on Friday, March 4th, and registration will run until May 2nd. We'll be providing uh, ELA and math uh, assistance, as well as uh, some fun activities for kids to do uh, throughout the day. Uh, so we're uh, hoping that we can match or um, uh, exceed the number of kids that we had last year. We were <coughs> close to 1,000, and that, and that is our goal again for this year. And we encourage any staff members who would like to participate uh, in teaching to uh, let us know. Um, some congratulations are in, in order. As you know, every each year, the Herald Review does its academic all-stars and Golden Apple honorees. And I'd like to announce the names of the of Sierra Vista of students and staff members who were recognized. Um, Matthew Conroy, seventh grade student at Joyce Clark. Ariella Antiman, ninth grade student at Buena. Keisha Davies, 10th grade student at Buena. Alyssa Saki, 11th grade student at Buena. Luke Cerna, 12th grade student at Buena. Nareen Adams, 12th grade student at Buena. Gavin Brownfield, 12th grade student at Buena. And Erilyn Hyatt, 12th grade student at Buena. All academic all-stars, as well as the PDS, Pueblo del Sol Student Council, was also awarded, and that's a new honor for 2022. In terms of our staff here in Sierra Vista, Tara Floss, teacher at Buena, Kimberly Fredericks at JCMS, Alex Wolf at Buena, Centoria Loudon at Buena, and Michelle Wambach, principal at Carmichael. 
There'll be a recognition banquet at Cochise College on March 19th. It's a breakfast at nine in the morning and there's still some tickets available. Congratulations to all of the student and staff recipients. Um, Buena's DECA team will be sending four students to the national competition. They competed this past weekend and had several students advance to the finals. Also, Brenda Fine Arts will be presenting A Wrinkle in Time, which is a musical play this coming Friday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock. So if you were able to make it out there, please do and show your support. The Brenda Jero TC Cyber Patriot team was given the opportunity to compete at the national competitions during spring break. We just found out, I think it was yesterday or today, that they were eligible. And the, the, the board will have a discussion later on about having that emergency uh, meeting on Thursday. Uh, Film and TV and Brenda Arto also uh, recently went to the drag races uh, to see how the team performs and related to what they've been learning in the classroom. It was a great trip for them to do that. Um, as we know, boys basketball advanced to the final four, mm -hmm. and I believe at our next meeting, we will be recognizing the team and the coaches. Uh, spring sports are running right now and competing this week. Tonight is boys volleyball, JV baseball and softball. Thursday is boys tennis and Friday uh, varsity baseball and varsity softball. And several students in our Buena Band and Choir advanced to the All-State Choir, Orchestra, and Band competition. So congratulations to all of those students. Lots of positive things happening in the district. Uh, that concludes my report for the evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. <clears throat> Next, we'll start with our board members. Uh, let's see. Joy, you want to go first? OK. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations to our new principals that are being pulled on board. It's wonderful to have so much coming from within our district that is so positive for us. And congratulations to Deb Whiting on her retirement. Retirement is fun, Deb. <laughs> That's it. Do you have anything, Gil? Um, yeah. Congratulations to all the students and staff um, on the government awards. Um, and it seems like the district is doing some awesome things. So we're on the map. And con again, congratulations and welcome to Dr. Sweeten. And congratulations to Ms. Jimenez for their principal position. Okay. Uh, the only thing I have, that basketball game was so exciting. And the boys did such a good job. Um, I love to see the kids out there doing sports and having a good time. Um, I also attended the... Okay, attended two. We attended the Boys and Girls um, event. They sponsor a student of the year, and it was actually a Buena student. Um, his last name is Mims. Um, he's a football player. He's in JROTC, represented the district very well. We're very proud of him. And that's all I have. So then the next item on the agenda is a pr presentation, and that's about the school marquee sign from Mr. McGovern. Good evening. Good evening. So real quick, um, if you remember, recall during our scoreboard new signage project, we had included two or possibly three marquee signs, one coming going out here at Fry and then two others to be determined. So um, I wanted to share with you that we, we definitely have enough for two. And this is what the signage um, will look like from the front. This is going to be the digital. This is from the side view. They'll be about 14 feet tall, 10 and a half wide total, with the digital display being three foot eight by uh, six foot nine. However, when we were trying to determine where to place those other two sites uh, uh, signs, that's where the complication came into. So Ms. Weller and I were trying to figure out what is the criteria for a site to be chosen, right? Is it who has the most traffic? Is it who has the best exposure? Who has the largest ADM? Which, which site requires the sign for, for, for messaging purposes? and which site can generate the most ad dollars. We didn't like any of these options. 
So because the methodology could not be determined that did not discriminate against our students, staff, or parents, uh, we decided that we would have to come and ask you for enough money to put a sign at all sites. Uh, we didn't think it was fair to say that, say, for example, Carmichael being uh, way into, or PBS being in residential areas that don't have a lot of traffic, are they not worthy of a sign? So we didn't feel that it was fair. So that is why we're coming to you tonight to say, please allow us to go ahead and, and give or put a, a new marquee sign at all of our sites. So that way we have some uh, new message, the messaging and, and branding that Ms. Weller is, is trying to accomplish with consistent colors for the sites, mascotting, <coughs> district logo is gonna be on there. We can consistently message everything because it's handled through one app. We need to get something to everybody or if we want to message something specific to the site, we can do that as well, all from the same same app. So the added cost for this is, um, it's a big ask. It's $385,000 for those other six site uh, signs. Um, it, it will be paid for out of capital or plant fund. Remember the plant fund is just sitting there because we have all of the ESSER money. If we choose to put part of it out of capital, um, because of the um, expenditure limit uh, easing, we have plenty of, of funds available there as well. So with that, I'll take any questions that you may have. Because we did put this on, a, on as an agenda item for you to vote on, but I wanted us to be able to have a conversation prior to that coming up for vote. Do you have any questions about the signs are pretty large, and I'm guessing they agree with the dark sky uh, city mandate? Uh, I would have to defer to Ms. Weller. I do believe that we're, we've met all of those those options. Yeah. Um, but if the city does have any any restrictions, then yeah, you know, if they tell us we need to go a little smaller for an area, we can, uh, which would just be a, a savings at that point. Yeah. Do you ladies have any hands? I think it's a, a great idea. I love the idea and the thought that you guys put into it that every school should have um, a new sign um, and their mascots and everything on there. I think it's a great motivation for the students and also for the staff. And now they probably don't, won't all look the, exactly the same because we just recently did something like this at my church and different areas have different provisions, but the fact that they'll all be new and have the mascot at, at each school and that we'll be able to put out information through these. I think it's a great idea and I'm glad you guys came up with that. And that's all I have. Does anyone have anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. The next item on our agenda is our public comments. And with this, um, I just want to remind everyone that you have three minutes to speak. And if you could really um, stop at the three minutes, because I got quite a few here. It looks like I got about 12 of them here um, so that everybody has a chance to speak. And if someone says something that you've already said and you want to forego your moment, then you can do that. Um, and if you would like a two minute warning, we will give that to you also. And I also want to remind everyone that at the public comments that we cannot actually comment on those, but um, some of the items might, it looks like will be on the agenda from what I see and we'll be talking during that time on those items. Okay. And so first we have in no particular order, we have Richard Allen. Hello. Hello. My name is Richard Allen. Today I'm speaking for my children, my wife, and any other parent in our community who might share the same opinion as I, but feel like they do not have the opportunity to let their voice be heard. My wife and I have two amazing children, a seven-year-old son in first grade and a five-year-old daughter in pre-K. We often discuss what is more heartbreaking as parents. The seven-year-old knowing what school was like before COVID and masks and him desperately missing the way things were, or our five-year-old not knowing any better and her thinking that her and her friends wearing masks every day is normal. While putting my son to bed last night, 
He asked me, do you think I shouldn't have to wear a mask to school? Because it gives me a rash and I got COVID anyway. My son is only seven years old. And that's what's on his mind late at night while trying to go to bed. He has been in speech therapy since he was two and a half years old. And one of the very first things we learned is he needs to be able to see the mouth to see the way it's positioned for proper pronunciation. The mask took that tool for learning away from him and his speech is regressing. On top of that, he has also been diagnosed with periola dermatitis. It's a red rash that circles around your mouth. I can't imagine how many children in our community are dealing with these issues and then some. And no, I'm not being a dramatic anti-mask parent. I'm just being a parent. Politics and agenda should have no place in parenting. He continued our talk last night with, do you think COVID is going away? Because it's going away, that's what I shared for my good thing. In his class, each kid takes turns sharing one good thing going on in their life. Again, my son is only seven years old. That is the one good thing he felt like he needed to share with his teachers and friends. He finished his conversation teary-eyed saying, I remember before mask and COVID, I want school to be like that again. I get that we can't just make this pandemic go away. People are still getting sick, they're still dying, but when is enough going to be enough and we start letting parents decide what is right for their children? I don't care what you may do regarding your personal health decisions, but I care about mine and my family's. And in my household, we've worn our masks, we've sanitized, and we followed every rule for the last three years, and we've all gotten COVID. It happens. It's time to let parents move on and decide what's right for their kids. It is our right. I don't want to force my children anymore. I don't want my son's hard work over the years in speech therapy to continue to take a step backwards. I don't want him to feel embarrassed about his face breaking out with a red rash. I don't want him to spend his one good thing at school talking about COVID, and I don't want him to spend his nights in bed thinking of the way his life used to be. I cannot express to you how painful it is as a parent to feel like I cannot help or comfort my child in this situation because other adults who are not his parents decide they think they know what is best for him. If you prefer to keep your children a mask, I support you 100%, and I think you should always do what you believe is best for your child in all aspects of their life. However, I should be able to decide what is right for mine. If my conversation with my son last night showed me anything, it's that continuing to force our children to mask up during this crucial time in their life could possibly be more damaging than any of us adults currently imagine. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Renita. Renata. How do you say the last name, Renata? No, that's my first name. Oh, yeah, Renata Danny. Yes. Okay. Good evening. Uh, this is a spur of the moment speech, but I wanted to also speak up. I have two grandchildren in the uh, Sierra Vista School District. One is three, one is five. A three-year-old wearing a mask is no harm to anybody or a five-year-old. And um, I just heard recently that uh, California, Oregon, Washington, and I believe New York are going to lift their mask mandate. So I just want to like ask to um, have another vote and it's time to move on and let these children you know, go on with life and laugh. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Jenny Walston. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm going to start off by what I printed off uh, today off of the district website. Um, this is the district mission and belief statement. And I'm just going to read the title and then a portion under uh, what it says under governing board. Um, so your title says, schools are for children, schools belong to the community, schools are people developers, self-effort educates. And then under the governing board, it says, we believe students are the number one priority. The board conveys the educational needs and desires of the community to the district and establishes policies accordingly. The board maintains high expectations for the district and themselves in working towards excellence. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's on your website. Um, and I got a couple responses also from some of the board members for my emails. And I appreciate that because it's really um, dismissive when you send an email and you don't get a response. Um, so I appreciate those that reach out and respond back to a member of the community. Um, hopefully this mandate on students and staff is over or about to be in light of the new CDC guidelines 
and laws heading to our Arizona Senate for vote. Hopefully it passes. 2616. If it ends, it won't be because of any of you, but rather because you have no choice and you will forever be known as the board and superintendent that kept SB USD masked for over one school year. The voters will remember this too. Switching gears, I went by the district office to flip through the new proposed curriculum. In a third grade teacher's instruction manual and others, I came across the instruction of culturally responsive teaching. Strange, this shares the same acronym as critical race theory and shared several key words and ideas. To the public watching, go see for yourself. They are still on display for a few more days. I took a picture of these manuals too, just in case you guys claim it's not CRT. I'm not saying it is, it may not be, but there were very similar words and the acronym says what it says. I don't see color. My, grand, my biracial grandkids don't see color, and this school district should not be teaching anything that separates us. This school district, superintendent, and board that represents the community and not the school should be less worried about masks and dress codes for grown adults that claim to be professionals, but more concerned about not, not allowing CRT in our classrooms and improving our school's rankings in math, reading, science, grammar, all Remember. of it. Thank you. That was three? Mm -hmm. oh. Can I donate Sorry. my time if she wants to talk? <clears throat> We're not donating time. Brian Duncan. So you're not going to speak, Brian? I'll use whatever time she doesn't. Uh, we're not keeping track of that, though. Then just give her my time if she's not done. Okay, go ahead, then. Okay. Um, where was I? That education affords our students at the place at the table wherever they may end up when they leave our schools. Spending money on books that may be against the law, that may teach CRT, is not a good investment for this district. And I encourage every one of you parents to go down there and look through those books to make sure it's not teaching something that will separate and, and make us go through what we just went through as a community and as a world. And for those of you who haven't seen, I'm going to leave for you the newspaper about the articles that we literally are spending time telling professional teachers how to dress. They should be spending their time teaching our children <clears throat> math, reading, and writing, not how to dress. They're professionals. I find it ridiculous that you're spending time on that and less on taking our kids out of math and making sure that they don't see each other for anything other than a friend. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Right. Next we have Donald Lee. Good evening, board. Good evening. I first want to apologize to you um, because we have put all this weight on you um, mm -hmm. as the only one holding this um, because uh, Mr. Dr. Holmes, um, you have just as much um, to shoulder as they do. Either one of you could have stopped this a long time ago in your recommendations. So I digress. Um, the summer of 2021, Governor Doug Ducey and the legislature passed a bill banning mask mandates. These are the lawmakers that the majority of us as Arizonans vote, voted for. Um, due to some confusion and to when, as to when the law took effect, um, we started this school year with masks being optional because, of course, the district did not want to break any laws. <clears throat> On August 17th, Dr. Holmes recommended uh, and the board voted unanimous, unanimously to mandate mask wearing as the law would not take effect until September 28, 2021. On September 27, 2021, a Maricopa County Superior Court judge ruled the ban unconstitutional, not on its face, but because it was added onto a budget bill. 
So it was a procedural issue. The fact that this is what our lawmakers wanted did not matter to this board or this district. On September 29th, <clears throat> during a special meeting, the administration and the board recommended keeping the mask mandate and the board passed it four to one. Currently, HB 2616, a House bill that would ban mask mandates in schools, is making its way, it has made its way through um, the Arizona House and is making its way through the Senate, again, by people we voted for. Even if it passes, it won't go into effect until 90 days after the legislative session is over, and this board and administration know that legally they can write this out until then, defying what most of us want. Now comes the hypocrisy. As you all know, SVUSD was looking at a $5.2 million shortfall due to an aggregate expenditure limit, or you could call it a spending cap, which Mr. McGovern has explained in previous board meetings. Well, on February 21st, 2022, Arizona Senate finalized a waiver to the spending cap, which averted a major crisis. The same legislature that the majority of us voted for. And yet, you don't see our district defying this vote, do you? Why not? After all, it is a law that was passed in 1980 that created this spending right. cap, and it is constitutional. Ladies and gentlemen, our state lawmakers chose to play game, chose not to play games with our children's futures by waiving the spending cap. We ask that you stop playing games by making medical decisions for our children. If not, our only alternative is to seek a medical waiver for our children or to support Thank them you. in refusing their masks. Make Thank the you. choice tonight. Next we have Karen Christian. Dear board members, my name is Dr. Karen Christian. I come to you as a registered voter, a parent of school-aged children, and as a person scientifically literate with my PhD in organic chemistry. I know this board has voted in the past to keep mask mandates in place. You've done so despite pushback from community members, students, and parents alike. You continue to enforce universal masking despite the fact that the CDC no longer recommends outdoor masking. And you made your vote despite the fact that you yourself, Ms. Robinson, work at a charter school that does not require masks. I hope today that you choose to change your vote to uphold the wishes of this community and to reinstall our faith in your leadership. It is well understood that the majority of COVID cases in children are asymptomatic or mild. Lifting data from the CDC's own website, we see children have a 50% higher risk of death from influenza compared to COVID. Even the CDC's new guidelines recognize that people who are, at a, who are at a lower risk for severe illness do not need to take the same precautions as those at a higher risk. I would like to think that you have our children's best interests at heart, but I honestly do not know. While you fixate on COVID and masking, you willfully ignore the serious harm that is caused by your interventions. The studies are piling up that show the clear harm masking does to our children. I'm going to cite from three different scientific articles, and I would be happy to send you the sources after our meeting today. From the article, Face Masks in the COVID-19 Era, scientists report that face masks have been shown to have substantial adverse physiological and psychological effects. These include activation of fear and stress response, fatigue, headaches, decline in cognitive performance, predisposition for viral and infectious illness, chronic stress, anxiety, and depression. My own daughter suffers from chronic stress, and that stress manifests itself as sometimes debilitating stomach pain. I urge you to consider the many unintended consequences that you are causing by forcing children into masks. From the article, Masked Education, we see that masks significantly affect children's ability to understand emotional signaling, leading to problems in communication, social interaction, and recognition of behavioral norms. And finally, from a study entitled The COVID-19 Pandemic and Child Cognitive Development, we see interventions such as masks have led to lower cognitive scores. Children now have significantly reduced verbal, motor, and overall cognitive performance, 
where their cognitive score is reduced by two full standard deviations compared to pre-pandemic. And it's even worse for children from families with low socioeconomic status. We don't know how long these effects will last. We don't know how long it will take to recover their speech delays, their mental health issues, or how long it will take to recover those missing IQ points. I ask you to start today the work of healing our kids. Let's lift the mask mandate, free our children, and start living our lives again. You have the power and the responsibility to eliminate this mask mandate. Let's grant our children the freedom we all crave to breathe freely, to share our smiling faces with one another, and to return to normal. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Gwen Patterson. Patterson. I'm Dr. Patterson. Okay. Okay. To your point, thank you, Dr. Christian. That was great, but I'm I'm afraid this is going to fall on deaf ears. Those things have been said before, and they don't listen. The studies are replete that these masks have very minimal effect on a pandemic, very minimal, if any. And the adverse effects are huge, which you just alluded to, and there's hundreds of studies about this. This is nothing new, but no one listens. And because of that, what's going to happen in the future, they're going to have to lift this mask mandate, right? They're doing it in New York City, the State of the Union, they're not wearing it. It's going to have to go. But we're going to remember how we were disrespected and not listened to. And we just talk and no one uh, speaks back to us. There's no dialogue. That's what we're going to remember. And what's going to continue to happen is the leaving of the public school, the decline of the public school. If there's a decline in the public school, I'm concerned there's a decline in democracy. We need the public school. So in, at the work session, this board wanted to listen to the CDC. And the comment was made by our superintendent that any, the CDC says that any mask is better than no mask. That means, was that hyperbole? Does that mean some mask off, off the bathroom floor is better than no mask? Are we kidding? Can we think? Will we ignore PhDs, MDs like Macari, Reich, Kaldorf, Baticaria? We're talking about Harvard. We're talking about Yale. We're talking about Stanford. We're talking about Johns Hopkins. Come on. Thank you. Next we have Beth, Hannah. Good evening. Um, Good evening. I thank you for letting me speak. Thank you for being here, everyone. <laughs> um, my name is Beth Hannah, and I'm here representing uh, my family. Um, I do have children in the school system. My mother, um, Sally Calhoun, was an educator um, in the system. Um, so it's not only my family, but friends um, as well. Not all friends agree with me. Um, but nonetheless, um, you know, I, I watched in the beginning that it was, um, as Gwen said, it was CBC were the guidelines that we were following. Um, my question is, and I ask others who've been, I haven't been here very often, I've watched on TV, but um, what, what guidelines are, are we following right now? Um, what, is that, what is that baseline? Um, what number are we trying to achieve? What is a good number? When we hit this number, we can stop doing this. Um, is that in place? Do we have that information? Or is it just um, a, a fluid a fluid target. That's how I feel. Um, I don't feel that there's something solid for us to be uh, a point that we're striving towards. Um, uh, also, um, you know, my heart goes out to those who have um, children who are suffering um, ment mentally and physically, as I think all of our children are actually to different degrees. Um, I, I know my child is. Um, might not have to seen, have seen the doctor for it, but as a parent, I know my child and I know that he is suffering um, and his friends as well. Um, I just um, implore you to 
um, go back to the drawing board um, from where you stand and what is the guideline that I am basing my decision on? Am, am I meeting that? Am I striving towards something? Is it, is it swinging like a pendulum? Um, what is it? And then please share it with us. That's your responsibility, um, I believe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Lacey Fitzpatrick. Good evening, board members and superintendent. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking. I was uh, kind of talked into it. So um, I feel like maybe that was a sign. And um, I do believe in bigger signs. So I'm a mom of multiple children. Um, they are all greatly affected by this mass mandate. Our entire lives have been changed. Um, sometimes you find the good in it, but ultimately it's been huge. Um, I believe that masks should be optional. It is a medical decision. It's a decision made by the parent only. Um, I don't see anything wrong with wearing them if it's important to you, but it's not your decision to decide what happens for my child when it comes to their medical well being, unless it's greatly affecting another person. And I feel like we already know that everything's coming out and we're finding that maybe this wasn't as effective as we thought it was. Um, so I'm gonna keep it really short with that. I think there's a lot of other people, I'm going behind two doctors, um, really passionate people. They've said most of what I wanted to say, um, but I also wanted to touch base on sending emails. When we send emails as parents and community members to our superintendent and our board members and we get two responses, it's disappointing especially from our superintendent. If I come to you with something important that is heavy on my heart in your schools, simple, received, we'll call you later, let's talk, anything, give me something. It is disrespectful and if you can't just respond, reconsider your job position. That's all. Thank you. Next we have Sandy. I should have this right. True. True. I'm sorry, Sandy. I'm so bad with days. Uh, hello. Uh, I would like to also request that you make the masks optional. Uh, states are granting the students and faculty their freedom back to decide uh, in several states. New Mexico just recommended all schools stop masks, 300,000 ch children liberated. Nevada made masks optional, 493,000 children liberated. Virginia made it illegal for any school district to enforce masks now and forever, 1 million children liberated. North Carolina passed a bill to stop all mask mandates throughout all schools, 1,400,000 children liberated. Illinois just made masks optional for the entire state, and districts were told that if they were breaking the law by enforcing them, 2 million children liberated. Thank you. Next, next, we have Steve Conroy. My name is Steve Conroy, and um, I want to start with the idea that the federal government created a pandemic of fear, which has covered our country and has destroyed our nation. They spent $5 trillion to get rid of a disease that has a 99.96% survival rate. That's crazy. And they've, they've closed down businesses, they've closed down schools, and they've made you panicked about something that nobody else can understand. None of us wants masks. You are part of our community. You're supposed to be helping us. And you're, instead, you're sticking to some kind of requirement to wear these stupid masks, which don't stop the virus in the first place. None of them do. You could wear 12 masks and you still wouldn't stop the virus. At a 0.1 micron, it'll go through anything. And viruses are everywhere. That's why they're called a virus. So we as a community come to you once again to say, listen, you're part of us. We're a community. We're a family. And we're all asking you to get rid of the mask. I don't see why you don't understand that. Unless you're getting a lot of money from the federal government to keep the mask on, that's the only thing I can think why you would want to keep doing this to your community. Every one of us in here are saying the same thing. Get rid of the mask. Now, the federal government giving you a million dollars or $20 million to keep them on, all right, tell us that. Then we want to understand. But otherwise, we don't understand. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Mary Newman. Hello, I'm Mary Newman and I have two high schoolers at Buena. This is my first time coming to a meeting because I am Canadian and I am compliant, but Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the survey that came out, the question was, do we support the board, the school board with your decisions? I do, but um, you didn't ask me, do I support masks? I wish the wording on that survey was just a little bit tweaked. I think it would have maybe presented a different response from our community. But I just wanted to tell you all about something. You know what catfishing is? You know when people are online and they're dating and they're pretending to be someone, but they actually look completely different? Mm -hmm. I just learned that there's something called mask fishing, that teenagers are now wearing masks because they prefer it over their actual looks. They feel ugly underneath. They're suffering from acne and other things going on. These kids need freedom. They need to have a normal experience of that, not just eye contact, the mouth, I look at you and smile. How does that make you feel? Teachers are not as approachable without their face being shown. I have a child that suffers from some social anxiety and that child will not ask her teachers for help. The teacher, one, she braved it and went to the teacher and the teacher said, ask a fellow student the answer. Well, now she has to go to another masked human and doesn't know quite how to approach that person because they're not quite a person. We are people and we need the full facial. So from a mental health perspective, for the psychology of our kids, kids suffering from depression, um, poor self body image. Um, this is my first meeting, so I apologize if I'm getting ahead of your agenda, but I really love what everyone has shared here that we need to consider the voice of our community. Those of us with our children home, my children, my two teenagers, have a total of five Fs on their, they were junior honor society students once upon a time. They are suffering right now, not just because of the masks, but because of the crazy 48, 48 hour policy that can't return to school with any symptom. Mm. My son suffers from migraines. I know it's, he had the aura beforehand, we knew what it was, but he was not allowed going to school. Because I reported an absence Wednesday for a fever that was on Tuesday, the child should have been able to go back Friday, right? 48 hours. But because I, the parent, reported it Wednesday, that's when the date counted. So my child was sent home healthy with three Fs. We need to do more. My kids are suffering. I'm an involved, caring, active parent. I've been in the school with the principal, the guidance council, who are all phenomenal. But this is beyond your staff. We need to do more. We need to free the masks and uh, make everyone more approachable so we can do better for our kids' mental health. Thank you. Thank you. Going back to our agenda, the next item on the, our agenda. Well, before I do that, um, Holly's on the phone. Holly, I kind of forgot you were on the phone there, sweetie, but... Um, did you have anything that you wanted to say? No, I'm okay. I'll, you know, I can maybe share at the, at the end. Okay. Okay, so the next um, item on the agenda is our consent agenda. Can I get a motion for the consent agenda? I move we adopt the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded for discussion. Is there any discussion on that? I do want to also um, let Mrs. Jimenez know that we're proud of her and I'm looking for great things as she moves on to Carmichael and our new, um, is she here? Mm -hmm. Oh, she is here. <laughs> Doctor, help me learn. Oh, she's not here. Okay. But Mrs. Jimenez, thank you. I look forward to you. Um, all those in favor? I oppose. Aye. Passes for zero. The next item on the agenda is our policy policy consideration first reading. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and review on first reading the policy revision recommended by administration of the following policies. 
GDBC support staff supplementary pay slash overtime, GCD professional staff vacations and holidays, GDD support staff vacations and holidays. Thank you. The policy revisions are necessary after adoption of the new wage schedules approved by the governing board during its December 7th, 2021 meeting and because of incorporating Juneteenth as a national holiday in the school calendar. The administration recommends acceptance on first reading for review in accordance with policy BGB. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor on first reading? Aye. 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 The next item is discussion and action, resignation and waiver of policy GCQC for professional staff member Cindy Johnson. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action regarding a request of resignation and waiver of policy GCQC-R from professional staff member Cindy Johnson, kindergarten teacher at Wachuca Mountain Elementary School. Mrs. Hill. Mrs. Johnson has submitted her resignation on February 15, 2022, and you have an attachment with an effective date of March 11, 2022. Per policy GCQC-R, if a staff member asks the board to approve a resignation after a contract has been signed and returned to the Human Resources Department, and prior to June 15, any such approval will be conditioned upon payment of $500. Any requests for resignations after June 16th and or prior to the end of a contract term shall be conditioned upon payment by the staff member of $1,000 as liquidated damages. The teacher may request a waiver of the fee by the board. Mrs. Johnson is requesting a waiver of the above re reference policy and she is completed and you have an attachment of the form. Physician's documentation is on file with the Human Resources Office. Administration recommends approval of Mrs. John Johnson's resignation and waiver requests. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. The next item, discussion and action approval of vendor purchases exceeding the $100,000 threshold. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action to approve the expenditures exceeding the $100,000 threshold for Amazon businesses. Mr. McGovern. Purchasing department must receive permission from the governing board before approving purchases that will put a single vendor's fiscal year total over $100,000 threshold. Because Amazon business is on a US COM RTC 17006 contract and has been proven to be a quality vendor who continuously provides quality service to the district, it is considered beneficial for the district to continue utilizing the vendor. Administration recommends approval. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes for zero. The next item, discussion and action approval of vendor purchases exceeding the $100,000 threshold. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action to approve the expenditures exceeding the $100,000 threshold for Precise Signs Company. Mr. McGovern. Purchasing department must receive permission from the governing board for approving purchases that will put a single vendor's fiscal year total over $100,000 threshold. Precise Sign Company is on a one GPA cooperative contract and will provide new marquee signs for the remaining district school sites. The total cost for the additional six signs will be $385,000 and will be funded out of capital. Administration recommends approval. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passage for zero. The next item on the agenda is um, discussion and action approval of gift scope and sequence. It is recommended that the governing board discuss and take action regarding the updated gift scope and sequence. Mrs. Rada. School districts must identify gifted learning. 